This next question comes from Tim. And Tim says, what are your thoughts on opening a physical retail location in this environment when the trend is away from that? I own and operate an e-commerce outdoor retail store focused on hiking, camping, and backpacking. We've been around 2.5 years and are experienced steady but not yet explosive growth. Brick and mortar has been a desire of mine since the business started and was in our three to five year business plan. Okay, well you and I have talked about this individually and I wanted to make sure and do a video on this. Because, you know, decision making is a big part of what business is all about. You know, whenever I've talked with any of the people that I've mentored over the years when it comes to expansion efforts or new line of business and things like that, I like to run the numbers and look at the analytics and the data. And then obviously we have to com compare that with the trends and everything that are going on in the world today and the economic climate that we're in. If it were me and I was considering doing something like this, I would get together with a high with a high level CFO. A CFO, what their responsibility to do is to forecast and put together projections to see if a deal can pay for itself and what the repercussions are in doing a deal. I want to look at the numbers so that I am fully aware of what I'm getting myself into financially. And I want to run different levels. Like what happens if things go great? What happens if it's mediocre? And what if it's not going very great at all? What do I have to do to support this? And what am I obligating myself to? Doing a business expansion effort is a very complex <clears throat> and emotional thing. And I really have learned over the years, in my earlier years, I was the exact opposite. I was just like, I just want to do it and let's go do it. And uh, yeah, I lost a lot of money doing that. <laughs> so I learned over time, thankful to one of my first mentors and business partners. And he taught me to say, hey, Sean, just if it's a great idea, it's going to be a great idea. So let's run the numbers and confirm that it's a good idea. What's the worst that can happen? We're going to spend a little bit of money running the numbers, doing the, doing the analysis, and that way we can feel comfortable and we're not losing sleep at night. You know, there's nothing worse than watching money just going out and never coming in and you're working your butt off. And it's part of the American dream. It's part of being an entrepreneur. There's so many entrepreneurs that don't know their numbers and that's what, you know, and they're losing money and don't even know it. So that's why I think if it were me, I would run the numbers, I'd get a good CFO, and I'd, I'd look at the projections 12 to 24 months so that if I did end up pulling the trigger on doing it, I could have something to measure against and figure out where I was wrong in my assumption and where was I right in my assumption. And I know that Jeff Bruno, one of our mentors, he would be really, really good for that to help you through that process. Now, as far as opening up a retail location in this environment, you know, I just went through this as an investor in another company and it was a fiasco, you know, it was, it was, it didn't go over very well because retail just isn't the trend. Uh, more and more people are buying online because companies are recognizing that it, they have to, to be competitive. It's called direct to consumer. I would be, I would be researching if I, if I had a retail, uh, excuse me, if I had any type of product line and I had an e-commerce direct to consumer brand, which means I, I'm not selling on, on Amazon, I'm selling on my own store. I would live and breathe reading every article and watching every talk and reading every case study and white paper on the trends going on in the direct to consumer market. And everything says direct to consumer e-commerce is the future. And we're seeing that in numbers. If you read, if you watch what's going on in the world, we're seeing that in numbers with all the retail stores shutting down. Now, that's not to say that there isn't a need for certain types of businesses for retail. Um, you know, but direct to consumer e commerce just seems to be the trend. Now, I have noticed in the investment that I've made that we do have a retail location and we use it for brand awareness, but the company's already doing over $15 million a year in revenue. They needed a place to be able to do pop-up stuff. They needed a place to do maybe returns, uh, customer service, um, do some Zoom, have little studio sessions for, for buyers. They were farther along. So I don't know where your situation is, but I don't think you're doing $10, $15 million in revenue. And so that's not really comparing apples to apples. If it were me, 
I would only want to be investing in things in which I knew were going to increase profitability to the company. And at the end of the day, if the numbers would illustrate that you could run a profitable location, then that's the numbers are going to speak for themselves. I'll end it with this because I don't want to get too long winded on this subject. You know, as entrepreneurs, when we want something, there's usually nothing that's going to stop us from getting it. 50 people could tell us it's a bad idea and because we want to be in control of our own destiny and we think that we can do something that somebody else can't, we're going to do it. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to lose all your money and you're going to go bankrupt. What's the worst that can happen? It's not that bad. You can go If you learn how to make money before, you can go right back in and start making money doing something else. So at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal to go ahead and start trying something new. That's fine. Uh, in this type of situation, if you want my advice, I would say don't do it um, until your business, your, your direct-to-consumer e-commerce business is at a higher level. Uh, if you're going to do it, uh, make sure that the numbers are already laid out and you've worked with a CFO. I, I would not even think about doing something like that unless I had the numbers run and had projections. And, um, and the last piece is, and you didn't put the, I don't think you put this in your question here, but you had done this in the Facebook group, is that you don't even live in the town in which the store is going to be there. I think that's a big <clears throat> X factor of a negative that you're not even in that town. You know, one of the great things about uh, the company that I invested in is, is they had a location that was actually right there in their town. And they were able to build a massive community of buyers and super fans of people that bought their product. And they used to do biannual or annual events where they would do uh, sales and they would do a half a million dollars in sales in one day because the community was there. And it would be, I think it would be, it would benefit you or whoever's gonna run that operation of a retail store to live in the community because that person's gonna build a relationship in the community and they should live there in my opinion. I, I would wanna do business with locals and I, that would mean I would need to be a local. And I think it would be a telling sign for me that if you were the owner of that business but you weren't passionate enough to move to the location in which it was going to be, that would, that would, make me question the passion that you would have for that actual retail location. It would make it make me think that it was more of an ego play than a passion play. A passion play is you're going to open up the store, work there all day, run it, close it, everything. Another thing you could look at is if you do have um, your e-commerce side, could you do your e-commerce side of the business out of that retail location and that way you get a two in one and that might help your numbers. But I would strongly consider your your passion if you're not even willing to live in the city in which the location is going to be. Um, or maybe you have somebody that does live there and they're going to run it and they're a local and you're just going to be partners and that could be okay too. But if your passion was to have a retail location within three to five years, then the passion should be that you would be there running it and you'd be there operating it and getting to know your consumers and your clients. Food for thought. Hope that answers your question, Tim. Listen, there's no wrong or right answers in the way that you're going to run your business. And these are just these are just ideas. But these are the things that over the years, now that I've, I'm 50 years old and I've calmed down a little bit from the emotional decisions that I used to make when I was younger, um, this is what I would have done. I would have really planned and, and really thought about the passion that was going to go into it. All right. Hope that helps, man.